Yes, people, Killer Keller here. This is the Street Culture Podcast, live from Arts Arcade Piccadilly for Keller Vision. This is where we source the underground talents of people that have uh, started their mark in the underground and moved their way forward into commercial success. We have a gentleman today that is moving and shaking out there in uh, Metropolis. He goes by the name of Endless, and his street art is not to be sniffed at. Check it out. So we have Endless in the house. How are you, my brother? Good. Good to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're talking to somebody that uh, is out and active and doing it at the yeah, moment yeah. street art. Central London. Central, central, central as, as it can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my, how things change. <laughs> um, how's it going? Good, yeah. Where have you travelled from? Uh, South London today, but I'm always everywhere in London. You are actually, <clears throat> I mean, more notably, you, you get about yeah. and you find your prime spots and you boom. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing that for like seven, eight years now. Uh, Like paste ups, Mm. recently like these boards that stick on the wall, like advertising boards. Mm -hmm. Um, Used to do like stencil work as well, but less of that now. Mm. Uh, But yeah, um, I don't like to stick to one spot like East London where it's known. Mm. I like to go everywhere. It's saturated East London, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. There's a lot going on. It's culturally appropriated, isn't it? Yeah, I mean like... Street art, graffiti street art has changed quite a lot. That used to be the place to go. Mm. Now I feel like you go there, you see these huge murals, mm. different things, and you're like, that's street art, but it's not. It's all planned and all run by agencies, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I like the more raw stuff, just illegal on the street. Yeah, and just getting it out Getting there. it out there, yeah, it's the freedom. That's what I like. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be like the go-to. How do you... This is a good question for somebody in your uh, calibre and range. How... How do, do you differentiate, say, for instance, doing an exhibition or a book or something like that, how do you differentiate the freeness of what you promote on the ground to suddenly upscaling and moving it into an established place? I mean, every time I've done it, I've done what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So freedom is just doing what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So even if you do that on the street or a gallery space, mm-hmm. as long as it's all your ideas and you're putting out the work you want, I mean, sometimes you have to negotiate a few things but mainly it's just what I want to do. Mm. Talk to me about that negotiation, explain that. Well like if there's a certain space and you can't do your huge idea you have to like bring it in mm. but all the visuals and stuff they always come from me. Yeah so why why not so much just stenciling how, how have you how have you moved what's been the thought process of when I first started I, I studied art for like six years and I was doing screen printing so it's a lot of layering so I've taken the layering into stencil form. So once you finish uni, you've got no equipment. Mm-hmm. So you think, how am I going to make all this stuff? So I did stenciling, and mm-hmm. that was like building up layers. Mm. But then when I went to the street, you have to be faster. Mm. And I was using digital ideas and painting ideas, so I've strayed more into the digital side of things, where pasting up an idea quick, I can get my message out quicker mm, and mm. more to what I want it to look like. What do you use? You use Procreate on, on iPad? Uh, Photoshop. Photoshop. Photoshop, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And how does that go for you? Like that transferal of what's on the screen over to... That's fine. That's how I've always worked. I've always worked from my brain to the screen mm. to the street mm. or from to the canvas. Yeah. That notoriety that is created through street art, that must give you a, a real uh, angst to want to get more up in more Yeah, I mean... Places. You're doing it. I always say when you're younger, you put your artwork on your mum's fridge (laughs) and your mum's your fan. It's 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 just uh, you want people to see your work. Yeah, yeah. So the more people see it, the more eyes on your message, what you're trying to do, Mm. there is. That's the basics. How have you been able to transfer that social media-wise? Because obviously that is the first port of call for a lot of people to see what you've done and then rediscover all your... How's how's that... uh, How's that yielding been in getting people Yeah, across? at the start, everyone was taking pictures and then hashtagging endless or endless artist. And I'd go through the hashtags and then write thanks for the picture and there'd be a bit of communication. Nice. But now I do less of that and more just working, caning it out. Mm. At that point, I want to big up all the, uh, all the people that actually actively go out and, you know, street art hunt, graph hunt. Yeah. You know, these, these yeah, photographers yeah. and people, they're, they're almost yeah. like the lifeline, yeah. you know. That's the thing in East London, there's street art tours, There's, mm. it's become a whole commercial thing. Um, How do you feel about that? That's fine, I don't feel anything about anything. I love, I love and hate everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it when it happens. Yeah. Hate it, want to destroy it. Yeah, I don't want to destroy it, but I know where I want to go and I don't want to be part of a scene. Mm. Like, when you want to be completely free, 
you don't want to be part of too many groups. Mm. If I have an idea, I just get the idea out and I just go out on the street and do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ask permission. I don't want to have too much interaction. Mm. No, I get you, I get you. Who's, who have been your influences up to this point? Uh, in the street art world, not, not, that, not that much, really. My influences are more people in the fashion world, maybe, or design world. Or, but to be honest, I just influence myself. I just mm. have ideas and mm. then do them. What's the, what's, what's the most, what's the most uh, challenging idea you've had up to this point? The next one. <laughs> oh, let's see. This is going to be a good podcast. Right? <laughs> let's go back. Let's take it right back. Uh, where are you from? What's, what's uh, your history? What, I yeah, grew up in begin? Suffolk, out in the countryside. Uh -huh. So studied art in Suffolk College, went to Cambridge School of Art, mm. sort of developed it on, did uh, fine art, screen printing, did all like, the history of art, philosophy, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was on trips all the time to London, seeing graffiti, the street culture. I knew I liked that, but I wasn't, I wasn't that. Mm. I wanted to be something slightly different. Um, so I just kind of developed my own style. Was there a, a breakthrough or somebody or something that gave you that, oh, that lightning bolt moment of, well, if I do that and I adapt it, you know, yeah, yeah. magpie certain aspects. Anybody? I think it was thinking about what street art is. Mm putting your artwork on the street. But then I was looking around London and I was seeing all these billboards and like all the lights and everything. Mm. And I thought that's the original street art. That's, mm. People are, their eyes are drawn to that, mm. sometimes more than the actual so-called street art. Mm. So I thought if I twist the advertising around and use certain things, logos, different things, mm. then I can come up with my own message within advertising. Mm. So what's your key, what's the key message of Endless? I mean, the name suggests that, that there, it's, it's an open, ta uh, you know, yeah, an yeah, open end of like, what, you know, how far can I take this? But, but what is your basic premise? What is your, what's your ethos? And the word Endless came from my continuous thought pattern. Like, as a creative person, you'll know, you just constantly have like, mm. things you want to get out. Mm. So that's where it originally came from. Then I use it with other words, so it's like a philosophy. Mm. So endless religion, endless mm. wor worship can be anything. It's been so, I mean, just flicking down your Instagram, man. I mean, of course we see, see it on the street, but um, the su that suggestion really plays heavily. Um, almost like ironically, I, I don't know, I think it challenges certain media and advertisements, which I, I think, I mean, it's got to be a win, hasn't it? Yeah, I think. I've done certain things. I was doing a whole load of artwork based on like icons that we worship. Mm. So I was doing Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell, mm. but they were like religious icons holding kind mm. of the things that we worship, like Vogue and stuff as mm. the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I did one as Karl Lagerfeld. And then Karl Lagerfeld actually saw it and brought me in and we did a collaboration. Really? So it was like a full circle. Wow. Of like from advert to my interpretation then back to, round to the brand. I wonder what the Cambridge crew would think of that. I, I mean, know. isn't it a weird way around about sort of things, but the more illegal you take it, it's so curious how that mm. works. It's almost like it gets a thumbs up. Yeah, I think a lot of brands hooked on like 10 years ago that this culture, they can hook into it mm. and they can bring it into their luxury brand or their cleaner mm. brand. And that gives them a whole perception like, their, their buyers are excited by it. Mm. It's a whole new thing, a new way of telling yeah. the story. It is. One, one fashion um, legend that springs to mind, I mean, aside from your Vivian Westwoods, you know, people like Dapper Dan. Yeah, Dapper Dan did it, yeah. I mean, to, to, to have that co-sign mm -hmm. later on in life. Yeah, but Dapper Dan did it illegally, then the whole full mm. circle came, mm. and then Gucci actually brought out the shop with him. It's incredible, isn't yeah. it? It shows you those brands look to alternative things mm. and then they'll bring it into their brand. And some people say that's wrong and it creates the street art or the culture. It's giving it the wrong image, but... It almost gives it an incubation period for bigger brands to observe. Yeah. Clock. I think if it's done well, mm. then it's only a good thing. Mm. It is, yeah. It is. And just sticking with Dapper Dan for a bit, you know, he was utilising all those rap artists and yeah. hip-hop artists from back in the day. Yeah. Taking full of... Which is what happens now on social media. Mm. Brands go after the rap artists or whatever, whoever's an influencer. 
Mm. It's the same thing that's happening in a digital space. How often do you go out? Uh, I used to go out like three or four nights a week, but Jeez. now it's like once a week. Really? Yeah. What happened? Uh, do more stuff in the studio, so uh, I just concentrate on that. When you go out, I'm like uh, I'm out from like three in the morning till seven, eight, so I'm pretty well, knackered the next yeah. day, so I can't keep doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a lot, isn't it? Yeah. People don't realise the work that entails. Yeah, and the walking. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, how much do you walk a, a night? From from those hours, so could be five, six hours. And people recognise you when you do it. They must do. No, I do it that early, so there's less people around, mm. and I like the ambience of the city. It's like a different world. Mm. It's, you'll see all the drunks come out of the clubs. You'll see the homeless people. Then the sun comes up, and it's a whole other world. It's like a film. Yeah, it's like a film, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's the unsung. It's the unseen. Yeah, it's the unseen. And you're the unsung city. Yeah, because that's what creates the vibrancy of the city, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you? Wandering, but I mean, give us a few to be fair, because I'm mean, going out that many times. A, a yeah, you night. see, you see all sorts of things. I mean, you see some gangs around. You see, I mean, I was pasting up some work once, um, quite central around the corner, on an electric uh, box, mm. and I was pasting it up, and a moped literally crashed right next to me, and the two guys had nicked it. They didn't have helmets on, and they just went rolling over, and I'm just doing this, <laughs> and they just got back on the moped and then went down Regent Street. I don't mind that because that takes the eyes off me mm. and the yeah. police chases over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. They went that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think, like, when you study art, when you're younger and you think what art is, there's no other art form where you're... I've been putting up work where someone's had a piss just there and I'm mm. putting up work. There's no other artwork like this. No. There's no other way of showing your work where you're dealing with all these different elements. So how do you explain that? Not necessarily to your tutors, because they'll obviously know that you had a different way of thinking. But mm. how do you explain that to uh, an everyday tutor or even a young, you know, a young person that uh, wants to get into it? I mean, there is, there is some, there's some rules to this. Yeah. You've got to be reasonably sharp. Yeah. I can imagine it's not the first idea that they have in mind. Oh, yeah, just go and stick a thing up next to that, you know, a bunch of syringes or, or yeah, where yeah. someone's pissed. It's not really in the remit, is it? No. I mean, you don't get taught at art school how to get your work out there mm. or anywhere. They don't tell you how to get your work out there. You can't go into a gallery and say, will you take my work on? They'll just mm. say no. So you've got to think of a way to bring people's eyes to your work. Mm. And for me, this was the best way because there was no rules. I could just go out every night if I wanted to. Yeah, and I guess for a lot of uh, people wanting to start out, that's the biggest conundrum is, is how to get that expose. Do you, do you, think, do you think moving forward that, would, that will... That Street art, um, in its broadest sense, will bring in people that aren't necessarily akin to the street or know about the original legends of graffiti. Do you think that will pose as a problem? Um, I guess it's the same as any counterculture. There's always that side when mm. people are thinking, is this going to be a problem? It's like when skateboarding goes into the Olympics or yeah. breakdancing at this yeah. time. It's like, is this too commercial? Is this going to... Is the... Mm. history going to be forgotten yeah but it can only i think it's only a good thing because those people might look back and now with the internet you can just google anything yeah they might look back at the history and learn yeah and knowing the fault lines is what's key isn't it yeah um with as you mentioned the breakdance inside things i know it's conflicted it's a very hot topic yeah uh, for 2024 with street culture um i'm with you i think if you have an entry hole for anybody with that pent up, I want to do something. Mm. If you, if you, you know, we all grew up on certain songs that would probably like to keep very in the back of our record collection yeah, yeah. because we all needed something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, when I was younger, I was always skateboarding, and that had the whole culture of mm -hmm. just do it. Like mm -hmm. if you want to go and build a ramp somewhere, you go and do it. You don't wait for someone to tell you. Mm. And I think people need that now because. Some of our culture is about, like, work less and mm. get more, but you have to work solid. Being into skateboarding the way you were, and again, that's another counterculture where... A selfless counterculture where, you know, one injury... Yeah. ..and you're out for six months or longer. Yeah. You know, uh, it's living on the seat of your pants in a way, but then you're able to... There's rules, isn't there? There's rules, and 
if you're visible to the whole network of, of street culture. Yeah. I mean, skateboarding must have done a lot for you back then. Yeah. It, for me, again, it was freedom. Mm. Like, do it where you want. You can do anything you want. Mm. Um, and it was that idea in your head that you can do anything you want. Mm. You just got to make it happen. Mm -hmm. But then I did break my leg and that stopped mm. me skateboarding. Yeah. Because I broke it really badly. And um, but then that pushed my artwork forward more. Yeah. So everything happens for a reason. <laughs> totally. So the skill sets were already cemented. But it wasn't just the physicality of skateboarding. It was like how you look at a city, mm -hmm. how you look at a space, mm -hmm. like where where you see like a ramp that's not a ramp. Mm -hmm. But now I look at the city in a different way and I think I could put some art there where yeah. no one has seen it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like I look at buildings in a different way. It's yeah. the same mentality. Wow, so so you'll look at anything at any given point and you're like, well actually that could work there. How many how many of them have you got in your in your mind that you're like, oh do you clock them and Yeah, yeah. Or I take a picture and then Google Maps it sort of thing. Really? Yeah. Or yeah, I'll just know it in my mind. Really? But some places I'm like, say if there's a, the wall up high and it's like that much space, mm -hmm. I'll make something that big to get up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that character? You have to forgive me. The one, the guy that did the little tiles with the um, with space Pac space invader. Space yeah, space invader. H his stuff's great because it can go literally anywhere, mm. any size, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And up high, so it lasts for a long time. It lasts for a long yeah, time, yeah. and it almost like blends in with. The, yeah. You know, I know that's contrary, but some things lean to being such a an important um, element to a city or a town mm -hmm. that it, it, pe people get offended when they're not there. Like yeah, to true. not have a ten foot tag yeah. in a place, it's almost like, oh well, yeah, we're not yeah. we're not counted. But yeah. it's true, isn't it? People yeah. have this idea that that's where that the culture's gone. It's like gentrification mm. means like an area with street art is worth more than an area without it in mm. some ways. The but, currency, but yeah. it has to be a certain type of street art. Mm. So it's, it's yeah, there's a lot of. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Well, that's where all the agencies come in, where you have mm -hmm. huge murals, mm -hmm. but they're taken over by agencies who choose the artists, who choose, they do proposals. The stuff, yeah. yeah, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother world. Does that, does that challenge you as a, a street artist more than, does it help or hinder more? Um, I'm not part of that world, so I just do my own thing. But mm. I think what, whatever way it's going that you don't think is the way mm. makes your way stronger. Yeah, because you're doing it? your own thing. Yeah, it does. It does. And how yeah. how how hard does it? How hard do you have to play to keep that integrity with you at all times? I mean, I would imagine that's. For instance, you you've done something that's a print. You've done, <laughs> for instance, you've done five hundred yeah. of the fuckers, and yeah. then you're looking at this and going, "No, it's not right. Mm. It's not right. Oh, I'm gonna put it up anyway." Yeah, I do anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that just because you can overthink? That's mm. like, that's what stops all creatives. Mm. So if I've had the thought to do it, I'm just going to go with it. Mm. And then I'm gonna, my mind's going to go on to the next thing. Mm. It's not going to hang around too much. Like in the early days, when I look back, I'm like, mm. not that my work's good now, but it was rubbish there. I'm slowly improving. I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm just saying I'm not going to stop. Relentless. Yeah. And I think, I think street, cult, street art has the culture behind it that kind of understands that, mm. doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. But there is a lot of drama in that culture as well, where there's beef with certain artists and all of this. But I don't go into any of that. Really? Yeah. Does that, does that happen a lot with street art? Yeah. Street what, art. More than graph? Yeah, probably the same. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So that really kicks off. Yeah, like that? but less, maybe less, but yeah, it does. It does. Really? I bet there's like loads of WhatsApp groups right now, just like <laughs> yeah. going hammer and tongs yeah. over such subjects, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> wherever there's success or wherever there's something different, there's always a bit someone that's going to hate. Yeah. yeah. But that's what keeps things fresh and keeps things Yeah, fresh. yeah, I mean, you just do your thing. If you get drawn into all of this in anything in life, mm -hmm. it will just slow you down, so. Yeah, it really does you slow you down. Just do your own thing. Yeah, well, so you, you got the, uh, you got the um, posters that you put up. What's, what's, what's your favorite, what's your most go-to uh, means of putting up your art? What's the, what's the medium? Recently, I've been doing these kind of boards that are advertising boards. Mm -hmm. So they're not big, but they can go up really high. So they're, they're printed on uh, Corex, like board that wow. advertisers use. So I'm using the same things that advertisers use, just in an art way. Really? Yeah, and I put those up quite high so they stay up for longer. This stuff must cost some money. Yeah. 
Talk to me about that, because it, 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 it is really a thankless task, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, because I'm an, I, I see myself as an artist, not a street artist, not anything, mm. just an artist. Mm. So I'm selling canvases, I'm selling artwork, mm. and then that gives me the money to do the street art. Wow. Wow, it's its own little ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you keep on top of everything? That's to me, and it, again, like we cannot underestimate the workload that goes into that. How, how do you balance that in your life? That's my life, so I, I don't, I don't know what balance is. I just, I've always got the thoughts and the ideas, so I'll just work all the time. I, obviously, not all the time, but as much as I can. Really? Yeah. Do you, do you, is there like a, um, a sweet spot in your because. At the moment, clearly you're you're in this fruitful place where you everything's just coming at you, and you're re you're ready to take it off the conveyor conveyor belt and move straight into yeah. production with it. Yeah. Any ideas you have? Yeah. That's quite labour intensive emotionally as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, the best the best feeling you get is when you do a like I'm doing a canvas in the studio, and it, I think it's good. You get that like feeling like. Uh, it's like a drug or something. I'm going to fuck them up with this one. Yeah. That you one, think, really. Because you always think this next thing is the best thing you've ever done. Mm -hmm. And that only lasts for a few minutes. Yeah. And then you're like, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're chasing that feeling all the time. Yeah. And doing the street art, I feel good when I see it in as many places as possible. Mm. But then that feeling only lasts so long. Why do you think establishment... Because... I don't know, for my money, I feel that it's still the unsung hero of, of modern art. Mm. Why do you think it's not heralded as, or widely regarded as maybe the oil paintings in mm. certain establishments? How come it's not taken that leap yet in people's minds? It has to a certain degree. I mean, you've got Basquiat, who's sold for multi-millions. And is that, that is he the poster, are they the poster boys of... of but the... you have to understand, like, the business side of all of that. Because mm. when he was alive, he was doing well. When he died, his work went... It's all about money. So yeah. his, his work went down and then it got brought back up because mm. certain dealers were doing auctions, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, you know, there's, t there's so many worlds in the art world. Mm. Um, so how do you leverage that financial upturn while you're alive <laughs> you just do what you can like when you're dead obviously you don't know what's going to happen so you just do what you can while you're here yeah i think yeah i think a lot of artists do it's that drug isn't it the desire of being remembered yeah there is that but i can be in my studio on my own all day i don't care if anyone's watching or if i get remembered but it's just that feeling of producing something that means something to you in that moment mm. I don't care about fame or anything like that. Mm. It's just if I can produce something that's close enough to what's in my brain, mm. then I can put that into an exhibition. I'm never like, oh, I'm amazing. I'm always doubting myself, mm. but that drives me on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. the, again, just going back to the expenses and how that plays out. Do you ever, in your wisdom, sit there and you're like, well, I wasn't quite happy with that, but that cost me X, Y, Z amount of money. That's a lot of money for something that I was just experimenting with. Does, does that ever come into play? Yeah, I mean, I experiment <clears> in the <throat> studio with a lot of materials like resin, plaster sculpture, paints, like everything's expensive. Wow. So that's why I say like most of my money goes into that. Yeah. Because they call it your art practice because you are practicing. Mm because you should always be experimenting and sometimes you'll do something that's good and mm. someone might buy that and then that will pay for your next mm. endeavor, so. Yeah, yeah, totally. It just, it just carries on. You never want to be like the flashy artist with a Porsche or the, all the rings, all those gold chains, yeah, yeah. you know? You want to be always putting it back into the art. Do you think, because there's certainly an, an argument for myself included, um, it's always for the bigger picture, always for the next thing, always for the big thing. Um, and you do run at, uh, at a incomings, outgoings kind of way. Um, that resistance to not adhering to the status quo of like, okay, I'm gonna, gonna get an MG with this one, mm. you know. I mean, it'd be nice, but sometimes your back's gotta be against the wall, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's always a worry. Mm. So you can't 
like if we're talking about the money, you can't overspend because mm. you need some back mm. in case everything goes completely wrong. Mm. So you've got to be a little bit clever and a little bit smart with that side of things. Mm. If you want to be in this, well, commercial art world is if you've sold one thing, so mm. you're a commercial artist. But I'm on the edge of everything. I'm doing the street art. Isn't I'm not making money off that, and I'm mm. putting everything into mm. it. But that's for the love of just having my my work everywhere. Mm. Um, Siblings, mum and dad still together? Yeah. That sort of thing? Yeah. What do they think when they see... I mean, of course, there's a, there's always an air of pride. Thank God you're not a drug dealer or something. <laughs> Big up the drug dealer. Nothing, nothing or an art dealer. Yeah, or an so art dealer. Oh, yeah, thing, yeah, same thing. Um, but they, you know, you're sitting over at your roast dinner, you know. Yeah. Far away, Norfolk. Yeah, yeah, Suffolk. I, what did Suffolk? Yeah. What do they say? What do they think? What's the general vibe? The, they saw me through, like art school, uni and stuff, so they knew what I was doing. But then when I started doing street art, I told them, my mum and dad pretty, they, they're open to all these things. They're like, liberal about it. Yeah, I mean, when, when I was like 14, we went to like break dance contests and stuff. They, <sighs> they know the culture and they took me to skateboard competitions when I was too young. So they've always, they've always been Yeah, champions. yeah, they know the culture. And then when I started doing this, they just thought it was good. And then mm. I had an exhibition out of it, so it wasn't just pure street. Nice. I kind of, yeah, they saw that it was working. Do they see a correlation between what you've you graduated as and and this now? Is there a, can they, can you, can you take away anything that you've, you learned in those informative days and... Yeah, apply? I mean, like, the techniques and stuff, obviously, yeah. with Photoshop, screen printing, just uh, thinking how you get your ideas out into the real world. Yeah and how to think as an artist, mm. like contextualize things, how to think about things deeply rather than just doing a basic thing, mm. um, which is good and bad, but yeah. that's what you get taught. What did they tell me that I've got to think about? Yeah, that or just sort of how, how to think. Yeah. Like, if you do this, how does it affect this, like even on the visual side mm. of it, or why, why are you doing that? Mm. And what does it mean? And what are you trying to say? I, think, I don't think a lot of people think so closely to that, do they? Yeah, I think, I think they do, but they don't know. It's like subconscious. Mm. So there's no right and wrong. No. Maybe you overthink. Maybe it's not good. Who, who are your contemporaries? Let's run some names up because it's got. They, like you say, there's a lot of people out there doing it, and people that you see in your path. Maybe some people that we aren't familiar with. Who, who's your contemporaries? People that are out there doing it um, that you can say you can safely say, okay, yeah, yeah, I've seen them. When I'm when I'm posting up, they're posting up. Nathan Bowen, I think you've had him on. Yeah, yeah. He's everywhere doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and I've met him loads of times. He's a really nice guy. And yeah. He's just non-stop. Mm -hmm. He's always out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's not that many other people that I see constantly for the last 10 years. Individuality, in that, isn't in it? In that street art genre. Yeah, it's individuality. When you see somebody that's actually doing something that is seism seismically yeah. different, Yeah. Um, it's hard to keep your eyes away. Yeah, it? I mean, Nathan's non-stop. He does more than me. He's non-stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is that yeah, a competitive that's... aspect to it? No, no. no. I, like, I know what I need to do in my life and other people do their own thing. Because uh. if I'm in the studio for months not doing street art, uh. then I'll, I'll just have a flourish of just doing it. So it's, it's not like, for me, it's not competition. Uh. It's just how I feel and what I need to do. So how, yeah, okay. So how much stuff is backed up in your, in your armory? Like, how far ahead do you focus and how much of it is retained for the magic moments? Um, like canvas wise on the canvas, I've got loads backed up and like ideas I'm working on that no one's seen. Really? For three years. Three years? Yeah. You've got on, three years worth? Yeah, but on the streets, it's almost instant. Like if I have an idea, I make it and then I, I can put it up. And then you just go? Yeah, it takes like two weeks from, from thinking to making it to putting it up, really? or a week. So do you live in London now? Yeah, South, South London. South London, wow. That's crazy. So you, your whole space is just... Your whole life is this. Yeah, pretty much. Even when I'm, like, away from the studio, away from London, I'm always thinking. Really? So I think, like, an artist is always an artist, is always thinking. Yeah. You don't have to be physically making, because I think 90% of it is how you think. Mm. And you can have, like... I've had plenty of downtimes where I'm like, this is rubbish, I'm oh. making lives of rubbish. And how you can process that and bring that around to a positive way of mm. thinking 
is going to drive you on because you can go into a deep hole. Yeah, the of demon in you. You're rubbish. Yeah. yeah, the demon in you. Yeah, like yeah most yeah. artists. Really. Yeah, yeah. You get that with music and. Yeah, every every creative aspect has that. How do you get yourself out of that hole? Uh, sometimes it lasts for a little bit longer, but then I try to be productive. Mm. So say if I'm in that hole, I'll be productive on something else that I know I can just do mm. and like get it out of there. And sometimes street art helps with that. Yeah. So you can just get it out of there. I don't, once the work's made, I just put it up, mm. which is like a performance art, mm. going around the town, city, putting yeah. it up. But I know I can do that without thinking too much. Yeah. But that's the that's the reward, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if there's a reward. I don't know about that yet. You, is that the chase that you're after? You're you're still trying to find what that, what that. Oh, yeah, I mean, is. when I was younger, I was like, if I can be creative and have that as a job, mm. that's a win. Yeah. But then when you're in it, you always want the higher thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it depends on your perspective of life. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. And it depends on where you're at. And you're like, what's your... I mean, you must have a girlfriend or somebody that you're, you're close with. I mean, it's really not the kind of lifestyle that people can just quite avidly like, yeah, I'll jump in with you. You know, I'll shotgun this. This is a good idea. You know, that, yeah, that, yeah. that, that explanation, I have to explain to people. When, when someone says, what is your job? I just say artist. I don't explain too much mm. because you can't... You can show them a picture. It's a lot easier. Yeah. But verbally explaining what you do to someone that doesn't know, yeah. it's kind of hard, yeah. It's a taboo, isn't it? Yeah, and people think, if you just say artist, mm. people think, oh, this isn't a real job. That's mm. the first thought that comes yeah, in, yeah, yeah. if they don't know. Oh, you're one of them, are you? Yeah, 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 yeah totally. So, the value, they, they never recognise the yeah, value, do they? You get, used, you get used to it. Yeah. But I'm not about, like, obviously I'm on the podcast talking to you. So Come on! I am talking, yeah. but I'm not about bigging myself up and talking to people. I just... If I do the work, they'll know. Mm. Let, the, let the art do the talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, over the years and decades, decades and decades and decades, I mean, oil painters used to be proclaimed as nuts, not having any understanding of how they work and the confined areas and, and the, 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 the fumes within the oil paints mm. in itself is enough yeah, to make yeah, you go yeah. do lally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you come into my studio sometimes, it's, like, toxic. Really? Yeah. But I'm just used to it, I mean, yeah. Um, okay, right, so you say used to it, but what if all of a sudden for, uh, you know, the missus wants to go on holiday or something? Yeah. You must get that, whether it's psychological from the fumes or whether it's just, you know, the habit of... That must be a real hard thing to remove yourself from. You must start getting itchy after a while. Um, I'm pretty relaxed as a person, so I can be on holiday for a week or two and just be thinking in my brain without having to physically do. Because mm. sometimes you've got to understand to take a break is the best thing. Mm. But mm. you have to be forced to that break. So mm. it's good to always cane it out because those breaks will come in mm. life, like mm. naturally. Mm. Yeah. How much do you hate being told you've got to stop for a minute? It depends on what mood I'm in. But if I'm, if I'm doing something, I want to get that done. Yeah. But then I've been doing it for so long, like I don't mind stopping. Yeah, you don't mind stopping. Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, this is the thing about street art is you're you're effectively dead if you're not if you're not putting out that volume that you're after. Yeah, it's good to be like that though. Yeah, I mean, you live once, so you might as well just do as much as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that doesn't mean to say, I mean, there's a lot of podcasts and Instagram posts saying get up at six, work your ass off, do this, do that. You can get up at six and do that and be busy but not productive. Mm. So you've got a. Sometimes I get up, and I'll do some. I'll go to the gym. I'll do this, that, the other. Mm. But I'll always get like as many hours as I can in that day, and maybe I'll go till twelve at night mm. or ten at night in the studio. So you're into your disciplines. You're into regimented y yeah, kind of yeah soldier style. Yeah, not that not that extreme, but yeah, <laughs> I know what I have to do. So if I have you been to the gym this morning? If, I mean, it does sound normal from a street artist. But if I relax too much, then. I'll get like angsty. Really? Yeah. And what do what what happens then? What happens? I just get it like so then get you incredible hope kind of. No, no. You just feel like uh, a down about it. You mm. just start to feel down about it. But so mm. you just got to keep busy. Yeah. You overthink it. You overthink it. Mm. Which is one thing that street art isn't about, is it? Yeah, it's... it isn't. It isn't. Really. There's no right or wrong. Yeah. You have to overthink and then not think. Mm. You have to be 
brutal and go out on the street and not care, but then you have to care. Mm. Otherwise, you'd put it on a car, you'd put it on this. So you have to be both all the things at once. Yeah. Have you ever had a couple of jars and done it? No, no. No? no so solid. Yeah, I think maybe in the early days, I was living around Old Street, I was maybe had a couple of nights like that when I was mm. figuring it out. Mm. And I was more like nervous to do it. Mm. But now I'm just walking, doing it. Yeah. Maybe that was the early entry and, you know, to have a drink and stuff kind of calms the nerves a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, bit, maybe, yeah. Yeah. But now I'm just solid out. Really? I don't care if... I don't care if I get caught, but also I know how not to. Uh Ah, but have you ever got caught? Yeah, a few times. Really? So how have you you got yourself one out of that one? How have you you dodged the uh, the proverbial bullet? speaking to the police nicely and just... Explaining what I do, and then they get confused. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. this is my job. Fifty quid fine, there you go, get yeah, out of yeah. here. But no, they didn't even do that. Really? Like they just, I just talked to them like normal people, um, and explained what I do. Mm. And then they were like, "Well, you can't do that here." And I was like, "Yeah, fair enough." And we just talked like normal people. Really? Yeah. Do, you, do you think um, there's become a maybe a short-term leniency towards? They know what it is now, yeah. so they're not like. They're still confused, mm. but they're more confused if you explain it to them and you're nice mm-hmm. than if you're doing a runner mm. and you're, you're getting away. Yeah. And I can't be asked to run away after walking four or five hours that night. No, no. <laughs> and I would imagine, like, it depends on the person you're talking to. If you see a policeman with tattoos down his arm, you could almost yeah. sense, OK, he might understand where we're coming yeah, from. Yeah, maybe, but you, you just never know. Really? It's sometimes the older ones who are, like, overweight or whatever, yeah. they're, they're the calmest. Really? Yeah. It's just, it's just luck, isn't it? Yeah, it is luck, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know it's wrong though, so you can't mm, fight the corner. Yeah. You just explain what you're doing. Yeah, because you do know it's wrong. Yeah. And it's, it's it can be perceived as quite a selfish selfish act. Yeah. Right. Often it's one of those ones where it's like, well, the motivation behind this is because I did this, and it's because of that that this yeah. has happened. You know, and uh, and you're hoping that people will understand the fault lines of the mm. of the the culture. Yeah. And at least you're not bombing. Yeah. A, or it's bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. That's mm. how I sort of look at it. Wow, wow. Um, sacrifice. Are there things that you feel like you've had to sacrifice, morally or otherwise? <laughs> in art or like... <laughs> in your activities? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you sacrifice time doing anything. Yeah. Like, you can sit at home and watch five films and you've sacrificed all that time. Yeah, it's true. So... You just, I know, I knew from an early age what I wanted to do, mm. and I'm figuring out how to do it constantly. Mm. So you have to sacrifice time. Yeah. Everything, what a, that a normal job would bring or a normal life, you have to sacrifice that. Yeah. Because if you live a normal day to day, you'll never have what you want, I guess. No, you wouldn't, would you? Yeah. That wouldn't make sense. And, and again, it just falls back into the remit of what artistry should be all about, right? Yeah, yeah. Because without that, then you don't have the more commercial side of things flourishing. Yeah. Um, do you feel that with street art being the way it is and maybe some core principles that are involved in street art, do you think some people, even in the street art world, won't get... Because let's be honest, street art, we're go- it's going to another place. Mm. Do you think everyone will be familiar with it, happy with that? Do you think it'd be the kind of forecast that street artists would be happy to jump on board with? Well, if it gets too commercial. Yeah. Um, yes yes and no, there'll be differences, but there has to be that grind. Mm. There has to be good and bad to get it somewhere. Mm. If it was that everyone loved it, it would just fade out. Yeah. It has to be something. It has to be anarchic. It has yeah, to have yeah. something. It has to be good and bad. Yeah. How much of that roots is defined in graffiti from bombing, tagging, throw-ups, etc.? How much do you feel like yourself and other street artists... You can't speak for other street artists, but yeah. how much do you feel their pedigree leans into the street art culture? Oh, massively, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was the originals, like, from the 80s, mm. New York, like, when you see all of that, all of that you've seen, it's in your mind. Mm. And just going out, putting your name up, tagging, that is what we're doing. We're just doing it in a different form. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all as one. Mm. And you, I've always thought you can't complain when someone tags on your wall. No. Because if someone put a Banksy there, if Banksy put his artwork there, he'd be going mad. Yeah. But what's the difference? Well, talk, talk to me about that, because that, that's quite political, isn't it, from, a, from a, um, an art movement side mm. of things, that 
maybe one person gets precedence yeah, because yeah. of their uh, notoriety. Yeah, it's like what you said before. Will the the love of it and the commercialism of it mm. change it? No, it won't because Banksy is the commercial love. Mm. But if I do something there, it won't have the same effect. Right. So he, he's brought it up, he's changed things, but it's not changed that much. And we like that. That's yeah, a, yeah. That's a good that's, thing. That is what it is. But when you think that, it's mm. kind of strange. Mm. When he did the last piece, the, the tree on the wall, mm. he probably used one of those fire extinguishers, smashed the wall of green paint, mm. and then did a stencil. Mm. Anyone, else, some other people, another artist had done such a similar piece of mm. work, no one talks about it. Mm. So it's just interesting. Mavericks of yeah. sorts. And, and again, just harking back to the attitude that is the approach on the Olympics having breaking, um, beyond the streets being so it's 50 years of hip hop mm. um, and everything suddenly taking this more intent there's a, a more intent view mm. Do, would you say Banksy and the like they are they are up there so far as acceptability that allows for you guys to do in run. some people's minds probably mm. but yeah, you know, a general person on the street who knows nothing about art or street culture mm. will know who Banksy is. Mm. So if they see something on a wall, they'll be like, oh, that's street art. Yeah. They don't need to think as much now, mm. but before, 10 years ago, they wouldn't know that. Yeah. So it's changing. You know, your culture. Yeah. Now it's been culturally appropriated again. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been reformatted. Um, and I guess that's where I'm coming from. It's... it's um, It'd be, in, it'd be intriguing to see where street art goes in the next four or five years mm -hmm. and whether it just becomes a, a sanitised version of what we're seeing now. Yeah. Could be, but there's always ways to do it illegally mm. and that will keep that going. Yeah. There's, it is sanitised, as I said, like in East London, the huge murals. You get out of the train station. Yeah. Like, wow, this is so inspiring. Yeah, yeah. But when you see something that's done illegal, is that more inspiring than something that's just painted over mm. 10, 20 days with mm. permission, with sketches, approvals? Can you see the future coming up behind you? Do you see young people? Because like you say, it's sanitised in more designated areas. Mm. Um, what's, your, what's, your penultimate, what's your penultimate goal where you say to yourself, well, at XYZ age, I did this? What would mm. that be? I guess doing bigger museum shows, bigger spaces, bigger exhibitions. Mm. Because I don't represent anything, a genre or anything. I'm just doing my own thing. But I want people to go into that space and go, wow, like, mm. this is amazing on every level. He's really thought about this. Mm. And then they'll maybe look back at street art and that side of mm. that culture. And that's where he's come from. Ah, so almost like as a conduit. Yeah. For people to re re take stock and look Yeah, back. and also change people's perceptions a bit. Mm. People have done it before, like... I'm, I wouldn't be the first one that cause people mm, like that. Of course, like, yeah. Huge. He's in museums all over the world. Yeah. Another fine poster boy of yeah, activity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there's still that that gap where people are not down in street art, but not understanding it fully and not seeing it at at that level. Mm. And I think there's work to be done there. Mm. But equally, maybe you don't have to push it. It, it might happen. It might not. Uh, cause, cause by example, there's obviously others that have gone from graffiti mm. using that historical reference point that they created for themselves and that um, that honest uh, roots, yeah. grassroots level, uh, and have made it to this commercial space that has opened, like just people like yourself and other people. Mm. Like how important? How important is? the roots to things because like you say you don't you don't readily go out and graffiti you may have mm. done back in the day to, to, to some extent but mm. nothing that would um come back and bite you on the ass later on uh how important is that to you i think it's important to tell that story and it's important to tell that story to people that don't know because mm. we can keep going on about this street culture within our own circle mm. and we're just fueling ourselves, which is good, hyping ourselves up. But, you're, you're, but you're, it's crabs in a bucket, you're talking to yeah, the audience. Yeah, exactly. I, it's good to go out there and those people on the street that don't know anything and educate them a little bit mm. and get them thinking in a different way. Because how you view the world is everyone views it in a different way. How we see that street is different to how that person mm. who knows nothing sees mm. the street. Mm. And if you can just educate them in a little way, mm. it might change the whole day. There's some people that you just can't, you know, 
the, yeah, the, you can't change. You can't change no. their opinions. Well, you, you shouldn't ch- want to change, but you, you've got to give them that option. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's hard. hard. But if it wasn't, if it wasn't hard, then it wouldn't be worth doing. Wouldn't be worth doing. Yeah. What's the future, brother? What's the future for you? Just carrying on, just creating my ideas into reality. God, I love that. Yeah. God, that I don't. I don't. I've got ideas. I've got things where I want to go, but it will happen where where it happens as long as I keep going. Yeah. 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 That's key, isn't it? Yeah. Relentless drive. Yeah, endless. Endless, endless. <laughs> Any shout-outs you want to give before we sign off, brother? No, not really. I mean, like, everyone that's helped me along the way. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think what I'm, what I'm trying to get across is just don't stop. Even if you think that you're doing one sticker on the wall, you're doing, like, small things, you just don't stop. Mm. And eventually you'll get to a place you never thought you'd get to. I love those stickers on the walls. They're so personable. Yeah. Even the stickers on the walls, people thought, oh, that's a rel- I've sp- spoken to people, that's just rubbish, that's just rubbish. Mm. Each one is a street artist or yeah. a, a different thought or a graffiti artist sticker. Yeah. People don't know that. No, they don't understand. Yeah, so there's just so much to see out there. Yeah. And, and viewing the world in a completely different way, mm. that's where we come in mm. as a culture. Those other people can view that world in how we view it. Yeah. See, what a way to sign off. Man, <laughs> the future's endless, as, as stated. Thank you so much for passing by, my brother. Endless possibility. Endless possibility. <laughs> <laughs> there you got it. There you go. Street Culture Podcast, out like that. Endless tells you so, all right? Till next time, take care of yourselves. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> Easy. <laughs>